What's going on everyone? 2AM here and modeling anime in 3D is sometimes difficult because it's hard to make the head look good from both the front and the side at the same time. I've learned some secrets to make them look good from any angle. So today I'm going to show you some specific things I use in my models to make them look charming from multiple angles. So general guidelines, actually these are quote unquote some golden numbers that I use as my default because this is what I've tried and this is what I think looks good most of the time. So number one is I like to make my eye angle anywhere from 21 to 23 degrees, meaning that when you look at it from the top down, the eyes are angled about 22 degrees. This concept can be easily applied. Once you make the eye holes, you just rotate them 22 degrees from the top. And naturally, your iris, your eyebrows, your eyelashes, they will all follow this angle. Keep in mind rotating like this makes it thinner at the front view, so readjust that if you must. The next golden number is 1.25, meaning from the front, you want the eye width in between your eyes to be about one and a quarter of an eye, 1.25 eyes. So as you can see for the screenshot, um, the red lines indicate one eye hole width. And in between those, there's a little extra space. That's where the 0.25 is. And usually I just eyeball it, but you can always duplicate the vertices of the eye hole and make sure that in between there's a little extra space. You may have heard that in anime, it's one full eye width apart, which is probably correct. But remember when you model the head in Blender, you won't have the eyebrows and the eyelashes yet, which increase the total width of the eye. So you have to account for those when you're first modeling the eye hole. Try to leave a little space for that eyelash and eyebrow area. But to further illustrate this, let me show you a model, a practice model I made where I didn't follow these two rules. So this is what it looks like when there's only one eye width apart. It looks really weird and it makes the face look way too big for the head. And also here I tried to make the eye angle greater than 23 degrees and it turned out looking bad. I thought it would make it look more 3D, but it just made it look worse from the three-fourths angle as well as the side view. Now number three quickly from the side view, you want one eye width from the eye to the forehead. And number four is that you want to fill out the cheek and the forehead curves. I was not too aware of this when I first started out and it's a common beginner mistake where the cheeks become too hollow. So just, uh, I'll give an example of this later, but, but during the edit mode modeling, and also the sculpt mode touching up after, I like to fill out the cheekbone area and make it slightly more inwards uh, around the mouth area. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you the process for this model and try to explain some of the specific tips that I've just mentioned. I already do have a full video on uh, head modeling, which I will leave a link in the description. And that's if you wanna see the more general method in this run through, I'm just going to try to go over more of the specific tips that I mentioned at the start. So here I've created the silhouette of the front face and I like to do the long lines first and then loop cut them with control R and create the curves. And you will see me using this method for most of the head. I make sure the curves are averaged out on the side view as well. And then I go on and complete the top of the head. Now I'll create the nose, mouth, and forehead area. And again, I'm doing the long lines first. And later, I will loop cut in between these and create the curves as necessary. Here at the mouth, I create these uh, three vertices in the middle. And that middle one is gonna be the center of the lips, the center fold of the lips. And I just poke out those two vertices as the lips themselves. Let's fill out the nose and the bottom jaw area. And there is your full silhouette of the side and the front. Now I start working on the mouth line. And again, this full process explained in more detail is in the other head modeling video. Go ahead and create the corner of the lips. And actually for the mouth, right, there has to be a space in between the lips, which I'm gonna do later, but I'm just gonna do the inner fold of the lips right now and fill that in with faces. 
And here's where I start working on the eye holes. So going back to that concept I mentioned earlier, we want to have more than one eye width and we want the rotation of the eye from the top to be about 22 degrees. So I try to get the general shape down here and make sure there's more than one eye width. There's the rotation. And again, it might seem that there's like a lot of space in between the eyes, but get used to seeing this as the correct proportion. And also remember again that the eyebrows and the eyelashes will um, take up some of that space. One important thing I should also mention is that foreheads in anime styled models are very big. Actually, I increase the forehead size even more later. I think the bottom 55 to 60% of the face is where the eyes start. Anyways, I flesh out the eye holes here and give it a little more cat-like appearance at the edges in order to fit the reference of the commission better. And you might remember from an older video that I always say, you should know how to model even without like tracing or um, modeling over a reference, which is what I'm doing here. My references are on the side, I don't trace anything. And um, in this case, I can't even do that because the reference again are not optimal for um, 3D modeling. So in my head, I'm just trying to average out all of these references that were given to me. Now going back to this mouth, Let's use the knife tool and just cut it like so, so that we can create that separation so that the mouth can open up. I'm just gonna merge this down and bring them closer together. Anyways, I'm just going to do the mouth box here while there are no uh, vertices covering it. It's just easier like the order is just better no need to hide vertices later and i think you already know what the purpose of this mouth box is but just in case you don't it's it just provides the color for the inside of the mouth and it doesn't have to be complicated or anything some people go ahead and make it a nice circular shape but i just make it a box nowadays because it fulfills the same function and these next parts, there's no real order to how I do it, but I'm just trying to fill out this entire bottom half of the face. The jaw area, the cheek area, and the nose, as well as the side edges of the face. So I guess I'm starting with the bottom, the jaw area, and I quickly just use F to create edges in between the mouth and the bottom. Then I multi-cut with Control R on those edges, then fill in those separations with pressing F. Sometimes it becomes a little too dense than what's needed. In that case, I just dissolve by pressing delete and selecting dissolve edges from the menu. And here we'll do the upper lip crease as well as the nose area. Of course, in object mode, we're gonna right click the object and select shade smooth. And we're also gonna apply the subdivision surface modifier later, which will actually cause a problem, which I'll show you how to fix as well. Here's the area between the eye and the nose, which can create some weirdly directioned um, quads. But with some experience, you'll, uh, you'll know how to put everything together while maintaining the quads, which is mainly mostly important for this stage of the modeling because you're gonna want to be able to loop cut everything. And here I'm just trying to piece together the edge of the mouth along with the cheek. And I can accomplish that by um, extruding out from the mouth area. And while I'm modeling the faces of the cheek, I'm already trying to make sure that the curvature is there, that the cheeks don't look hollow. So uh, when I create the faces for the cheeks, I push them out a little bit more, like a little bit in front of the eye already. And later we're going to adjust it even further using a little bit of sculpt tool, but it's good to already have the good base there. All right, it's the home stretch. We just have to work on this last puzzle for the faces. Maybe dissolve an edge or two. Now, I don't like the way this closed out because there's this oddly shaped triangle in the middle. Well, a triangle shaped quad. And it would be a lot more natural if I just uh, delete that area and create a additional loop cut. So that's what I went with and I dissolved one there. Now I just have to press double G and move those to fill in the space that was left. And now I'm quite okay with how that turns out. 
the flow of the vertices is going mostly in the correct directions. I apply the subdivision surface and it causes the mouth to open. We just need to select those middle mouth vertices, all of them, shift E and drag it all the way so that the crease is one. Let's create a crease on the nose area as well so that it maintains the sharpness of the nose even with the subdivision surface applied. As mentioned, let's increase the size of the forehead a bit. And now when we're extruding the faces of the forehead, I want to make sure that there's some curvature that it curves outward. And when I extrude these, I scale them down on one axis so that it just becomes straight. Now the face has more vertex density than the rest of the head, but in order to lower the amount of polygons, I just merge them down with triangles when I'm going to the side and the forehead. So let me show you what I mean by this. Like we don't need this many um, vertices for the forehead because there's no detail there anyway. See at the top, there's not many faces. So let's merge these into triangles uh, at the top of the forehead where it's not seen anyway. And these actually turn back into quads uh, after the subdivision surface is applied. But whether it's triangles or quads at this point, it doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna do uh, something similar at the side of the head as well. The side and back of the head really don't need that many uh, faces. It's essentially just a sphere back there and it's often covered already by hair. So there's no need for it to be extremely detailed. So here I'll just merge these at center at the point where no one can see them anyway. And we don't have to worry about the human ears because this model will have cat ears. So we're just going to close this up. Um, in an older video, uh, you might have seen me using a sphere and then masking around it or retopologizing around it. But I'm just going to do this quick and simply. It's probably more efficient. It looks a little squarish here, but we can always just go over it in sculpt mode as we do now make it a little more spherical around the top, the back, the sides and give a little definition to the forehead, the cheeks and the inset of the mouth as we mentioned earlier. Make tweaks as necessary until you're uh, satisfied with the shape of your head and just make sure the mirror modifier is closed up. My merge distance is around 0.05. We're also doing a little triangle merge down here around the neck area because there's a specific number of vertices I want the neck area to be so that it can attach pretty neatly to the rest of the body model. So I make additional loop cuts and dissolve certain edges here and merge certain uh, vertices together so that it maintains the number of vertices that I want at the density that I want. There I can just extrude inwards this circular shape that will become the neck and then extrude the neck itself, make a single loop cut, straighten that part out a bit. And the neck doesn't go straight down of course, there's always a slight angle to it. And so final tweaks, let's pull this jaw out a bit more make it a little more sharp and defined with the crease as well. And let's just puff out the cheeks a little more as well as the mouth area. That way it will look good from the three quarters view as well. Now from this point, I know that the end model will probably look good. It's good to download into your brain what a good head model will look like even before you add the eyes and the eyebrows and the hair. And for my personal models, it looks something like this. And the only way I learned this was to actually complete models themselves. And then if it looked good, then I went back and see, okay, how did it look before I added all of the other stuff? And this is how the final model turned out. A couple other things to note is that this model has fixed lighting, so there was no need to like edit normals or anything. And there was no need for like the triangulized mouth area for like the extremely oversized mouth expressions. Oh yeah, a couple quick things. Don't forget to rotate your iris to match the rotation of your eye hole. I even rotate a little downward like that. 
And let me also quickly suggest 3D lashes instead of 2D, which is created by dividing the eyelash into three and then just extruding from the middle face like so. Really helps the all angle type of look. Anyways, that's gonna be it for today. I've been busy the past few weeks, so there are a bunch of videos I have yet to release, but stay tuned. Please like if you liked the video or if it helped you, and subscribe if you wanna see more Blender anime content. I'll see you in the next one.